Case of five. Also something I don't see very often in practice, thankfully. We got a big circle here. That's probably a important. But what uh, what do you guys think about this? I can take this one. So it looked like we were kind of deeper down in the like fascia and fat. Good. Yeah, right here we got a band of, of thick collagen, right? That's fascia. Excellent. And then there is some inflammation, and it looked mainly neutrophilic. Let's see, I think we have some in here. Um, so putting those two things together, I was thinking of like a necrotizing fasciitis, something that could cause inflammation that deep down. Excellent. Yeah, that is that is exactly what this is. And necrotizing fasciitis is a really serious disease that requires, you know, quick uh, intervention clinically, often extensive surgical debridement in addition to antibiotics. One big problem that happens more on the clinical than the path side is that pyoderma gangrenosum uh, is often um, misdiagnosed clinically as necrotizing fasciitis. I think a big part of that is because a lot of... Um, uh, pyoderma gangrenosum is kind of an unusual and relatively uncommon. I mean, I've seen a lot of it, but a relatively uncommon disease compared to other things. And I feel like there's not a great general awareness of, of pyoderma gangrenosum and its ability to mimic necrotizing fasciitis. So I always showed it to my medical students um, uh, when I ran a musculoskeletal and skin course in the past and showed them, look how extensive this looks. You'll think it's neck fasci, but the rolled borders and the history of recurrent kind of, you know, ulcers that, that begin to heal up and then break down again should really make you think about this and you don't want to do surgery so anyway i think that's always important to keep that in mind and i always encourage my my medical students that if they weren't in in derm that they get a derm consult because i feel dermatologists are a lot more familiar with pg and can usually recognize the features um, but what we see and what we want to see to make a diagnosis of necrotizing fasciitis in addition to the right clinical and sometimes on imaging there'll be you know gas in the tissue like you know from gas being produced by the bacteria depending on the situation, but we will see necrosis and death of, of skeletal muscle and or fascia, usually both together, and a bunch of neutrophils and debris. So here's, even though this is a little out of focus in here, this is all degenerating, dying skeletal muscle and neutrophils in here. You can tell it's skeletal muscle because look, the nuclei are around the periphery. So these are still alive, but not very happy. These are beginning to die and break down and there's neutrophils going over to the fascia it's all dead. See how pink and pale it is? That's not just because it's a pale slide. This is completely dead. There's no nuclei left. Completely necrotic fascia, necrotizing fasciitis. In here, not much inflammation, again, because everything's dead. But what we do see is all this blue hazy debris. Those are, those are sheets of bacteria. Tons and tons. So almost always, again, I've only seen a few cases, but really what I want to see is extensive necrosis. And it almost always goes hand in hand with tons of bacteria growing right in the midst of the dead fascia and dead skeletal muscle. And it, making this diagnosis is important. Again, it's a rapid, really a serious uh, thing. And so it's important. So here's two pictures I'll show you that are a little bit more clear. This is all dead skeletal muscle, tons of neutrophils and necrotic debris. These pics are from my friend Najib Ben Yahia, who's a pathologist in Tunisia. And here's a picture with a variation of H&E stain that he does in his lab that's quite beautiful. Um, and you can see all this debris here and all this fine blue grain and stuff. That's all bacteria. So uh, the group A streptococci are one of the big causes of necrotizing fasciitis. You know, the same kind of strep as uh, strep, strep throat, basically. But uh, for some reason, in some cases, it causes a very serious, rapidly progressive infection that can be life-threatening. So that's necrotizing fasciitis, something we rarely see. But this is, this is really a good example of what I want to see to be sure that that's what we're dealing with. Okay. And if that's not suspected clinically, that deserves a phone call. Or, uh, or other notification uh, so that the, the treating uh, physician knows, um, unless of course they already suspected that's what it was, which usually I feel like they do.